Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This time I'm going to discuss something that I really personally hate and that is compiled basic. So let's first do a little segment of theory. So programming languages could be uh, first uh, categorized in, in a number of fashions, I'm sure. But, but the, the, for the purpose of today, we're talking about compiled and interpreted. So interpreted means that you basically run the source code directly. The, an interpreter takes the text file, parses the text file and executes what's in the text file. You would have JavaScript, PHP, and a number of those programming languages uh, that just read plain text files uh, out of nowhere and uh, out of the text file. And there is no binary uh, conversion of the source file of any sort. Compiled, uh, that has sort of two sub-segments. If you look at a program language such, such as C, the C file is converted into plain machine language. All right, but then you have something like Visual Basic, which takes the source file and converts it into something which is called pseudocode or p-code. Um, so it, it's not really, it's not the original source file that it's run, but it's also not real machine code. There is something, an interpreter that reads the p-code and then executes based on what's the, what the content is of the p-code. I, I guess Java is the same thing. I guess portable languages are, are it's very handy to make them into p-code. So you save a lot in the, in the parsing phase of execution, but, uh, but you don't need the mess of converting it to real machine code. Um, so p-code is a binary chunk of data which has an interpreter that picks the p-code and execute based on the content of the p-code. The machine that runs uh, in Java, it's a virtual machine, the Java virtual machine. Uh, if you look at Visual Basic, it usually came with one of those DLL files called VB run. That's Visual Basic run file. And then there was a number for I guess it stood for kind of the the version of the uh, the P code format that it could handle. So C64 basic, which is it? Is it interpreted or compiled? Well, it's it's interpreted, but not really, because it has the advantage that the code editor and the the virtual machine that it's going to run under. They are, they are sitting in the same environment. So what you're writing when you're writing C64 basic code, it's not pure ASCII text. The, uh, the, the commands are converted into one byte. So if you run, uh, if you like do a go sub 9000, then the go sub it's converted into one byte. So it's sort of a P code already. Uh, but not fully like P code, because when you take a basic compiler, that one converts all of the basic files into P code and, and optimizes and converts so that it should run a lot faster. So what, uh, what basic compilers were there on the C64? The most common one is, I would say, Blitz. It's the same family as Astro Speed. They are basically the same small tweaks from the same foundation. And the reason why this is the most popular uh, is probably because it was used to compile CBase, the BBS program. So there was a great need for reversing the compiled basic into editable, uh, editable uh, C64 basic again, so you can apply all your patches and then compile it back to, uh, to this P code that uh, the, the Blitz is running. Uh, but a rather common one is also Jetpack. Uh, Jetpack had the virtual machine in a separate file. So it uses a lot of the basic ROM, but it needs it. It's sort of a basic extension as well that sits underneath the basic ROM. So if you look for a file called RTL-64, then you know that that is compacted or, or compiled with Jetpack. Uh, Microprose uh, used this for a number of their games. Uh, I can't say that Pirates, I, I 
I think Pirates is also done with this, but I know that uh, there are simulator games such as, uh, I don't know, Silent Service or, uh, or um, Gunship and uh, Decision in Desert and uh, what have you not. They all use this Jetpack compiler to compile BASIC. So big portions of those games are actually written in C64 BASIC, but compiled for faster execution. The thing we're looking at today is pet speed. Uh, it's probably not the most widely used, and this is why there is no decompiler before today. Okay, so this is my program, pet slow, because it's handling pet speed and uh, it's not converting it back to plain basic. Uh, that's just too much work. What I need is some sort of uh, documentation of the format so I understand where to apply my patches to make uh, to remove the protection. Protections embedded in compile basic uh, they are very messy to work with because you need to understand the P code format in order to understand where to apply the changes. Uh, so I will not uh, go through this entire game, of course, but what my program does, it's analyzing the header. So here you would see the file, it's called basic.prg. Um, what the program, what uh, PetSpeed is doing, it's, it's adding the P code. And so the block here is from uh, 3E18, and then the, it ends at 84E5. So this is Risk, the card playing game that we released just recently. Uh, that's the amount of, of compiled basic code in there. So it's, it's really a lot. And I started doing a lot of this manually, but uh, it was just too much work. So I, it was less work to write the decompiler and, uh, and do a proper <laughs> documentation of the pro what the program was doing. Uh, and then data. So data, when you when you put data statement in basic, that has a separate segment uh, in a, in a pet a pet speed compiled file, and then you have the arrays here. Um, I haven't supported. Uh, it's not supported yet in the decompiler, so that's work to be done. And also start in it. I don't know what that is doing, but for the purpose of what I've been doing, that wasn't necessary to understand. So that's also something I eventually need to understand more of. Uh, so what you do in my program is you can write um, a comment uh, section here uh, and you can store that to uh, a separate list here. So you can load and store it. So these are addresses uh, where I wanted a comment to go into the uh, to the uh, decompiled file in order to document what every what a section was doing. So looking at this first thing here, it's it's taking this value, a floating point value of 90 do 11 and then three times zero. That is a floating point value that means do 11. Uh, which is quite easy to read from here. I think it's actually minus DO11, but uh, it doesn't do the minus, so I don't care how it's handling this. I know this is DO11. And then this is, uh, this is pushed to uh, one of the two internal registers. Main uh, is, is the name I've given for the first register. And then that is pushed to the stack. And then it takes the value of, of OB and pushes that to main. I shouldn't say push because it stores it uh, in the main and then calls the routine for poke. So this is the way that pet speed is handling a poke DO11 comma OB. So it's, it's basically turning off the screen. So this is what this is doing. And then you have the same for uh, run, disabling run stop. It's uh, it's poking FC to 0328. Um, yeah, so you see the logic here. It's it's taking values and then pushing them to the stack and then calling the basic routine, and and that that base. So it's setting up to uh, all the data in the relevant places for the basic. Uh, command to be executed and then it could pick up the data it needs from the places where it's going to where it's expecting to find it 
and then that basic command is basically executed. Let's see if I can show you anything else. It's a lot of pokes here. Uh, go sub, so that one is D2, and then that actually has parameter. Most of the basic commands, uh, the way this is set up, is expecting stuff to be pushed or, or stored in this main or second register, and then it's called the basic. But this one is actually command, and then there are two additional bytes. That is the go sub routine. Uh, I my comments are the one with the brackets here. Uh, go to go to yeah yeah. So we can just I don't want to scroll through. Well, we can show you a bit of the uh, the protection here. Um, so it's populating uh, main with a pointer to this string. You see memory write and u two colon is uh, is also drive command and then you have. Uh, yeah, a lot of text down here, and then that is pushed into variable 13. Uh, yeah, so my comment here is save string to variable 13, and then it's actually doing that. So this is what it's doing. So it's basically doing var 13, whatever that is. Uh, it's probably like an X or a Y or, or something else, but in the compiled form, they just have an index. And then you have the string there. And then it's what this program is doing, it's extraction, it's extracting ports, portions of that string and then executing that as basic commands. A very, very difficult way of reading it. Um, because when you're trying to parse, you're trying to find the commands, it's sending to the disk drive and you can't find it because it looks like it's just one big stack of, of a string. But it's dynamically building the string it's issuing as a, as a disk command and it's taking sections from different strings and also calculating a few two additional strings. So um, a, a rather good protection for being a basic game. Yeah, and also I can show you the data here. Uh, so this, all the data here was was strings. Um, I, I do support um, bytes and words and, and the other um, options I found for populating data. But, but again, they are all strings. I guess this, and yeah, so what you see here is the length of the string. So these are all OF byte long strings and then 1a long strings is the second part of that data uh, data chunk that's added to the main here. So now you've seen parts of what we do with pet speed compiled basic. So now Fairlight can handle pet speed compiled uh, programs without breaking any sweat because we have developed tools to handle it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.